Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the last days of Europe. I'm your host, Hail Mokolova, in which we are meeting now in Germania. Walter Venk stepped into the large, empty room. Havel sat with a full suite at the table, desperately trying to stall for the very late daddy leader and Venk. Ah, Walter, I see you finally arrived! Havel shot Venk at Glam. Yes, sorry about that. There was a lot of traffic on the way here, Venk explained. Well, let's not waste our time anymore. Let me introduce you to our guests. We have Kurt Gonson, head of the army, Nils Montan, a Swedish ambassador to us, and the Prime Minister himself, Targa Erlander. The fourth person here is the translator. Havel said, almost as if on cue, Bowman, Daddy Balding Bowman, walked into the room. Havel and Venk rushed to greet him. Bowman waved them off and sat at the table. Erlander spoke up. The negotiations had begun. It was finally decided after three grueling hours of menial discussions, there would be more negotiations like this over a series of days. With the absence of Bowman and Erlander, let's do this. Alright, so last time, we finally had the... 1,000 year government for us, the Reich, and now we gotta keep going down this way, even though we've just finished up hunting down the Melorg, our Nordic brothers, and we did I am the Reich. Uh, let's see, give them a... give themselves on a silver platter, our Reichs. Verka? I kinda like this. So, we got a couple comments to go through as well. Um, I'm just kinda looking through here. Oh, Madame Du. Wunderwaffe, because this is one of the comments saying that, um... Uh, this one gives you GDP growth, which, let's see, the Grossram Continental Europa program will be put into action. So that's kind of cool. So let's keep going down with this. Give themselves on a silver platter. Reichsvecker can be compared to a pig. It was filled with the degenerate pigs, and they've met the same fate pigs do. They've been beheaded and served to the Fuhrer on a silver platter. We will now feast on the flesh of the beasts that we have slain ourselves, for it is our just reward for our fight against degeneracy. Our feasts will be glorious, for our conquests are great and mighty. The funds we will gain from the Reichsvecker will feed the Reich for many years. Others may try to steal this from our plate, but we will stop them. This is our meal. And now we have a cup of coffee to keep us nice and warm, and there's another comment from yesterday saying that, let's try to win France. Well... We have 11 out of 10, so it's not looking very good for us. Maybe we will, maybe we won't be able to get France, which will really suck, but it is what it is. What it is. Round table, or the Wehrmacht. Walter Venk sat in a crowded room, huddled with the other generals over a few maps. No one knew where to begin. Venk eventually spoke up. I think we should extend a warm welcome to the men who came all the way here from Sweden, he said. The translator relayed his message to the Swedes. They seemed pleased. Now, about what we came here for, you see. The world is currently very unstable, and we should prepare for any instability. If we take a look here, Venk pointed to a spot on the map as he roughly explained German intelligence about its rivals. A discussion began about what to do if the OFN invades. Though the Swedes noticeably required a bit more erratic, racially parts, charged parts of the discussion, the talk seemed to go very well. Forwards together. And we do have quite a bit of political power right now. So, there was one comment saying from yesterday, you know, we're supposed to get more conservative support, but I keep influencing more and more of the reformists. That is because I would have really, really liked to see more reformist support. Because right now, actually, reformists are actually still in power. Which means we don't have that much power ourselves. So I don't think there's anything else we can do with reformists. Maybe that's if a reformist. You know, reformist Borman. Um, I'm not really sure. So we'll see what happens. But it seems like we can only go conservative now. Since I guess we would basically betray the reformists. So, yeah. Hmm. 63% conservative, wow. Supportive, supportive. If that's the case, I'm going to continue increase conservative support, but I would like to get some more conservative support, or find areas where conservatives and reformists are very close together. Because it's party bureaucracy. Alright, there you go. They're conservative again. Ah, so invite Sweden to the Pact War Games in 1966. The Pact War Games are a demonstration of the ties between the members of the Einheits Pact. The War Games uh, features demonstrations from all branches of services from all, all Pact members. It aids in developing tactics and fostering bonds between nations. This year's War Games will be held in Austin and focus on winter combat and invasions of Arctic places. The Pact War Games could be used as a tool, tool to help relations with Sweden. We can invite all their branches of service, bringing us both closer together. This may be viewed as a violation of Sweden's neutrality, however. We could also only invite the ground forces, which could feel less like a violation of Sweden's neutrality, but not creating as much of a bond between the nations. Invite them fully? Ooh, not bad. We get more conservative loyalty? So, let's invite them fully. Atlas shrugged. When it came to the mega corporations that dominated the German economy, there was no proper way to describe them other than Titanic. This term originates in the mythology of the Greeks, the supposed once rulers of the world living on through name and those, those who ruled in the present. 
Now, in the culmination of Bauman's plans, the pillars of the economy, the absolute giants that dominated the German life, were to become as much of a part of the past as the Titans. Through a mixture of threatening bribery, extortion, extortion, and in some cases even legal means, Reichsvecke was no more. Now, there was a complete and utterly di different company, Reichs Industrial Holdings, that just so happened to co coincidentally own the exact assets once owned by the Reichsvecke, and just as coincidentally, happened to be completely and utterly person personally observing to the Führer. As mythical as Atlas held the sky, so too did the Reichsvecke, as the Reichsvecke held the sky too, must Bormann. However, Bormann was no Atlas, and none of the physical care routines his doctors put him through gave him quite the strength to hold up the sky as such he had to get help. 60% of Reichsvecke, now RIH, was to be sold off to the highest bidders. They were not as friendly as Bormann would like, just as it so happened the highest bidders with uncomfortably frequency happened to like reform, but Bormann had no alternatives and no excuses for turning down the reformist offers. Still, the 40% share remaining within the Nazi party control was still more than enough for him to control the Reichsvecke, to control Atlas, to control the sky, it was, and it was quite to his satisfaction. Atlas is gone, though the sky, of course, remains. Anything else here? No. That's really disappointing that we couldn't get France, but that's okay. Reichs. Becca, 60%. That is the number of Reichsvecke shares we will sell out to the highest bidder. We'll gain a large amount of funds from this, as shares in Reichsvecke are expensive and rare. Any fool who's interested in stocks will immediately leap at this opportunity. Unfortunately for us, though, the main group interested in stocks holds unfavorable loyalties, primarily towards the reformists. If we allow them to buy up the stocks, we could end up with a Reichsvecke that is loyal to our enemies again, which would put us in the same position as we were with the militarists. Alongside with their influence in Siemens, this would place the reformists in a great position to totally stick over the Reichs economy. We could block their sales, but this may not go well with their allies status of Sweden. While other nations such as Norway have cast off degenerate ways and joined the Reich, Sweden remains an anomaly. They have assisted us in the past, and with our domination of Europe, it seems an anomaly as to why they still do not join us. The reason is simple. They seek to maintain neutrality in the Cold War. While they might not be willing to fully align with us, they are willing to provide us with assistance. If Sweden were to become heavily aligned with the pact, we would surely be able to influence Finland as well, leaving all of Scandinavia with us. A useful ally. Uh, very good. And right now I have a cup of coffee here, if I haven't said it so already. And it's, well, I should have drank it a little bit more quickly. Now, zero, and we have eight? Wow. We need two. That's a 66% chance we get one or two, so that's not bad. A 33% chance, 66. A 50% chance. Actually, you know what? Let's do this one. This 50% chance of getting exactly what we need, and a 50% chance of getting exactly what we don't need. Oh, boy. A Scandinavian Defense Initiative. Reports have come in from about negotiations for a military agreement between Sweden and Norway. The agreement's terms are vague at the moment, but if they are any version of it is agreed upon, it will surely make Sweden a more loyal partner to the pact. We could force the Swedes to agree to a version more favorable to us, but the Swedes may find this as a violation of their neutrality and be less inclined to agree to our other demands. Um, I don't like that the Norway gets German Norwegian lost opportunities, so I think they really want to agree to this. Why not? <clears throat> I get more organization and planning speed, as well as Norway. And Norway is in the pact with us. They're a bunch of liberal fascists, but not the true national daddy socialists like us. But that's okay. Under our control. The remaining 40% of the shares Reichsvecke possesses will be under our direct control. We should control this with an iron fist. No longer will Reichsvecke be allowed to operate without our approval. They're truly under the control of the Reich now. Not some petty militarist puppet. It will be all under fear of Bowman from now on. This will undoubtedly upset some petty bankers and businessmen who are eager to dive back into the Reichsvecke and begin turning it against the Fuhrer once more. They are now beginning to stand with the reformists like the judeo Bolsheviks puppets they are. They are irrelevant. Anyway, now that we control a large portion of the Reichsvecke, oh, we also get some reform support. Unification of standards. An interesting concept has been floating around the pact as of late. This concept of un is the unification of equipment standards across Einheitspact. The new equipment and uniforms will be based on ours, giving us more influence over the current members of the pact. The only problem is that some can make it can make Sweden feel like less of an equal and more of a puppet state than they join the pact. More loyal support. I'll be honest, I don't really care about the loyal, the militarists, I mean, military support. So I guess for right now, we're going to try to get conservative support as much as possible, but we're still going to have some, uh, you know, reformists as well. So. Um, the hair. Let's go with a little bit more conservative loyalty. That'd be nice. Very nice. Anything else? And we used up all that political power we just had. Oh, boy. Oh, my apologies. We have this as well. And we should go and do some more tank stuff. Because I love tanks. Tanks are just so much fun to use sometimes. And then a message. Uh, a message actually we'll do very soon. Maneuvers in Scandic. So about Scandic, Vank said, leaning forward on a decrepit table. Do you want to help in organizing it? A seemingly innocent offer. It would appear that arbitrary to refuse. 
uh, it would appear arbitrary to refuse. Go on soon, knew better, however. Why are you implying that Sweden and Norwegians need your guidance for everything? These are supposed to be ju joint military exercises between Sweden and Norway. Go on soon replied, as usual, Montan raced to pick up the pieces. Why? What my colleague means here is that the German involvement in, in affairs between Sweden and Norway could be seen by others as a breach of our policy of neutrality. Hope you understand what effect this could have on us. I do, Bank said. He could clear this up. Your offer still stands. We would draw the author. The offer, I mean. Offer. Oh, it still stands. Alright. Very good. So good. Oh, come on. We're at nine. We need one more. Uh, it might be best just to wait to see what happens. Because now, at this point, we get a 33% chance of getting the exact number we need. Five is not bad, but the question about trading arms. I hope you don't find this as overbearing. We have our own demands for the Reich, Montan said. The group looked at him boredly. We request a discount on German weapons in exchange for the restoration of Swedish exports to Germany to the pre-Civil War levels. No, you'll pay the same price for our arms as everyone else, Vank snapped. What? You can't just... I just did. Hang on, I need to speak with my colleague in private for a bit, Havel said. He dragged Vank outside. Gosh darn it, Vank. What are you thinking? We have the finest arms on the planet. We don't need to give them a discount. This isn't about how good our arms are. This is about their demand only. If we reject it, we look like selfish pricks. Come on, just tell them you change your mind and we can put this issue to bed. All right, bye. I won't be happy about it. They'll buy our superior alien products at the same uh, price as everyone else. No, no, no. We got we to gotta play ball with these guys for now. Besides, I could use that stability. Maybe a little bit. Yeah. We got to keep an eye on that under our control. A message. We have neglected the obvious solution for the bankers that are threatening to buy up all the Reichs Vecca spare stocks. Killing them. We'll send a message to those who oppose the fear. This will definitely upset the reformists and other political outliers, but we don't care about that. As long as they don't act, they'll be fine. If they do things we don't like, the, like these degenerate bankers, then we'll purge them. It's simply a code of conduct for simpletons. Well, let's hope they obey it so the fear does not have to waste time writing another list of arrests. Concessions, protections, or protections. That's simple. We want to protect Reichs Vecca concessions, our land, our police, go on, son, declared plainly. It's our company, though. The hail will do the job easily, bank. Argue. Do you really think that we can't protect our own land? I assure you, our police are some of the most well-trained in the world. You don't need police. You need soldiers. Who knows what insane dudes will attack, which is why our professional police force will handle it easily. Your police force is neutered. They can't... Stop. Okay, this is due to a misunderstanding, Montan butted in. The citizen shall put all eyes on him. Vank, you realize that if we let the hair protect them, it'll make Sweden look weak and vulnerable. All right? This is why we insist on the police protecting them instead. If you really insist, we'll let the hair protect them. So let's move on, shall we? <clears throat> That's final. Well, in that case, I suppose Swedes can handle it themselves. Say, Levy, I don't care. I, I, want, I want Sweden with us. That Well, obviously, Sweden isn't super, super incredibly important. If we get Sweden, we might be able to get the Finns with us, which is something else I want. Especially since rumors have it <clears throat> that the there's been a communist resurgence to our east. So we must be prepared for them. We must be prepared. Actually, how's the budget looking? I've actually not looked at the budget at all since we've got so much other stuff to read. We're at 101 billion for an annual deficit. That is really good for us. Holy cow. <clears throat> hmm. This is Schaffleischer Gruppe. Let's see what's next on the agenda, Montan said as he attempted to organize the talks. Ah, the Cold Climate Research Group. With a what? Havel asked. I was informed of this. Havel made a mental note to fire some people once he got back to Germania. Oh, well, apparently some German and Swedish scientists have gotten together to research combat in the cold. They're using a bunch of North Sweden as a testing grounds, Montan explained. What are they testing exactly? I'm not sure of the specifics. But they want the backing of both of us. I'm not sure about this. We don't need to test things already we know about, Rap butted him. He and Havel had some suspicions about what was being tested. Pressuring Swedes into this could seem like a breach of neutrality. Though if Sweden accepts, we could test some untested weaponry. We can't pass up an opportunity like this. Let's fight and get research together. Ah, Germany's new banks. We see the tour of control of the Reichswecker. Our feast is finished. While we were inevitably forced to give a portion of a plate to the reformist allies, this is still a great victory for us. We have gained a large amount of funds from seizing 40% of Reichswecker for ourselves. While we do need to invest a large amount to make up for the lost funds in our purge of bankers, we've torn, turned a profit as well. And even better, the Führer's power has grown even more. There's more pressure to be loyal, something that shall be critical in a crusade against reformist degeneracy. Negotiations fail. Negotiations had gone bad on for days without any progress. It had become a screaming match between Bank and Gonson as they both argued about which country could defend against or crush the other. Havel and Montana sat idly by as the translator was preoccupied with the fast-paced whirlwind of insults going on behind them. Montana didn't like Havel that much either. His head hurt from the loud screaming. He could see the writing on the wall. Montana stood up. Bank and Gonson's arguments fell into a lull as they stared at Montan. All right, we can all see where this is going. He said firmly, absolutely nowhere. So. He began picking up the documents laid on the table and stuffing them in his briefcase. I'm going to stop this right now. He closed his briefcase and walked out towards a, co a coat track painting in the corner of the room. Sweden will not be joining the Einheitspact as an observer. 
We will con still continue to deal with the Germans. It'll be business as usual. He absentmindedly put on his coat and hat as he spoke. We are neutral. We do not pick sides, okay? Neutral. The Swedes are part of the negotiations. Good day. Montan left the building. Gorenson followed. Vank and Havel were left sitting in stunned silence. Finally, Havel spoke. The fear will have our heads. Hold on. Fa failed negotiations? We gave them almost everything. Almost everything. Almost not everything, but almost everything. And they still pulled out. I'm going to say it's probably possible to get them in the Einheit's pack, but... Is that forced that we can't get them? Because we did... I thought we did really well with this, but... The Anglo Diplomat. Hello there. I'm Parker McDonald. From the Embassy. I'm just out here getting a feel for the general mood of the Germania towards us. There's a large amount of misconceptions that need to be corrected. There isn't much... As much animosity in England towards the pact as you may think. We are still dedicated to a friendly relationship with you. England still relies on Germany for its trade about as much as it did before the Civil War. And I'm sure there's a large amount of German businesses that rely on us as well. Our programs to increase domestic production don't. Doesn't everyone want to produce as much as possible in their own country? And we have to advance or get left behind. The OFN, well, it's just an open option that we use to get things we absolutely can't from the pact. A mere trifle, really. We aren't really interested in the business of the pact busting right now, England isn't going to stand up to you, and if I might confide in you for a moment, we really have no way to. We know that you are the major power of the continent, and we know that we can't compete, and we're just fine if we leave each other alone. I mean, good relations between England and Germany is what we want, correct? We're better off together. If not, it would be unfortunate and may cause us to go seeking out other powers. Good relations, in my view, keep, will keep England where it is now in relation to the pact. Otherwise, if things sour, there may be an unfortunate situation, which may very well cause us to seek aid from other sources. Well, good to meet you. I have to go, unfortunately. There's a meeting with the Chamber of Commerce I'm scheduled to speak at. Let's keep in touch. Let hope we meet again sometime. Smiling faces, sometimes. Oh, good. Pact influence will increase by a massive amount, and this is a Chamber of Commerce, so I instantly thought of Old Row Blues, Enclave Reborn Mod. Chamber of Commerce, get rid of Collapse Trade. I play a ho Hoi for Old Row Blues too much. Cool. Message. Germany's new banks. Glorious. And after that, we shall do one true ally. Despite the treachery, despite the infestation of dissidents scheming throughout the Reich, Despite the mass of, of special interest groups of questionable loyalty to the party, what allies never failed us. The Old and New sides dutifully served as official uniform police force of the Reich since 1936, and the time has come to reward this institution for its unwavering dedication to national socialism. The Old Pole shall be reformed into something greater, something with a capacity to defend the fatherland from threats both internal and external. Good. Seven. Ooh. Are, are they going, doing anything else? If not, then we pretty much have them. I don't want to risk that, so. Decrease trading, and we're kind of okay. And actually, the Cabal is at 86.4%. Not bad, my friends. Are we finally... Oh, we're finally negative, my friends. We finally did it. We have finally an annual deficit in Bowman's Reich, even though our GDP is going down. That's all right, though. Oh, one true ally, my friends. Yes. Ah, oh, it looks like we actually might win here. Great. The all Pulse expansion, as well as serving out as a police force. The Oderung's Polizei will absorb the duties of the Abwehr and the institution of the Gestapo under the leader, uh, leadership of Heinrich Müller. Furthermore, a new organization dedicated to rooting out internal dissidents is to be established within the Opel, one which provides integral information for secret police to do their duty and wipe out sedition. Now, that does hurt our costs, and we just got to a deficit, but you know, it is what it is. We have eight again. Is there anything for two? Two. We'll lose half a million, huh? One to three... There's nothing here that gives us one or two, which is dangerous. This is quite a dangerous game to play. We shall wait. We shall wait, then. At least we won one turn. Boom, boom. I'm going to wait to do this, because we don't need to do that. Yep. And, well, the hair must become more conservative. And they are allied. There we go. Conservatives rule. I guess we could probably dismantle them eventually, too, for the reformists. It's really disappointing. I, I thought we could go a little bit more reformist than what we currently could do. There are three. I, I kind of want. I don't wait and see what what they do. So. And big sadness for me. I just finished all my coffee. Hmm. I want you out, my friends. Wow, that's a lot of liquid reserves. Actually, no, it's not. That's a big number, but you see the K. It's not a B. I much prefer a B there, but that's okay. What's the next research done? Relatively soon. After this, and deeper pockets. While we may be expanding the Orpal to ensure the military does not take over, the Orpal isn't guaranteed to be loyal. We must fix this no matter the cost, and it'll take a heavy cost, literally. While some may call it nepotism, we will call it pragmatism, and we need pragmatism in these trying times. A party can spare a few dollars for the Orpal. 
We'll call it a reward for the service. They'll do deserve it, after all. They have remained loyal to the Fuhrer when no one else has. We will show them that loyalty has its rewards. Oh, what better. And truth or dare, alone in his office, Marty Ballman reflects upon his next decision. With Muscovine rebuilt and finally stabilized, a provisional military government is no longer needed. The time has finally come for the civilian administration to step in. Soldiers will lead their place to policemen, quartermasters to engineers, generals to bureaucrats. This would be the best choice for the region. A military government is, by definition, inefficient, and the population won't tolerate to remain under the boot for much longer. However... From a different point of view, turning the provisional military administration into a permanent structure will grant the Fuhrer a political victory. Ensuring that the militarists are to be are sent to man distinct outposts in Muscovine would cripple the militarist faction in Germania and drastically reduce their influence on the affairs of the Reich. A small section or sacrifice in Muscovine, a boon for Germania or the contrary, Bowman can't keep up but think that both choices have their own value, but one cannot hesitate for all eternity, and in the end, it's much better than Muscovine is returned to a civilian administration. It's returned to a militarist exile camp. Ooh. I mean, if we... Oh, Vank is all the way over there. If we send him over there... Wow, I would hate to play as them. But maybe I want to play as them. If we throw all the militaries over there, that means we throw all of our enemies over there, too. So, the hail gets more power. Hmm. A permanent structure. I mean, it doesn't really matter since they're already gone anyways. I'll go to civilian administration. Just because... I mean, the militaries should be defeated as an organization anyways, right? So. Maybe I should have paused the game when I was doing this. Ooh! Alright. Oh, what the heck? Maybe I did the wrong... I definitely did the wrong thing here, then. Hoffman is back, but he lost it all to these guys. What the heck? Well, I guess that's one way to shatter our border. Ah, oh, helicopters. Actually, let's stop making those guys. That cost us more, and I would like to make these guys 40 combat width eventually, so... Yeah. Can we actually make them 40 combat width? That'd be so good. Really thick divisions. You just see hundreds of thousands of soldiers and helicopters coming at you like that'd be so cool that'd be honestly a little bit terrifying but you know what oh we barely have enough we just barely have enough command power for that oh it's so nice or political power army xp oh words are hard good 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 more grand attack special forces thank you it's almost 1967 so happy almost new year and we're done with our land doctrine let's keep doing our air doctrine actually Yes, please. Yes, 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 yes. So these guys, there's seven. That's not good. We'll see what happens. If they go to ten or nine or eight, nine or ten, we gotta act, so. The strategische Unterstützung Polizei. Unterstützung Polizei. In the following weeks, following Muller's meeting with the Fuhrer, the entirety of the German intelligence apparatus changed faster than ever before. This reform removed every redundant agency in the Reich and consolidated all power under the Orpo, with Heinrich Muller at its head. As such, Bowman and Muller have overseen the foundation of the new branches and bureaus under the Orpo's control. One of these is strategische Unterstützung Polizei, placed under the leadership of Gerlein or Reinhard Gerlein. The SU is a Germany's shield in the struggle against dissidents and terrorists who seek to threaten the Reich. The Bureau's main task involves spying on and gathering data of any citizen suspected of treasonous activities and operates through a vast network of informants, both voluntary and not. The SU works closely with other bureaus, as its agents must never let or act on any information they acquire to protect their secrecy. Galen himself has supervised the training of these new agents, and are now many are infiltrating every sector of the German society. The number of informal and collaborators also grows exponentially. Bowman expects the SU to become one of the pillars of his rule, quietly learning about any agitators that that threatens his vision. The party shield will prevail. Followed with uh, deeper pockets, of course. Of course, my friends, of course. Uh, how does that hurt our cost? It goes back up. 1.3 god dang billion. Oh! We were doing so well for a while, now we are hurting on the inside. And a new leader? This daring new organization requires a daring new leader to maneuver its many administrative complexities. Bormann has decreed that the current head of the Orpo, Müller, will be renamed its first chief. What he lacks in an ideological zeal, he makes up for in bureaucratic prowess. The selection of this former Gestapo leader will pr doubtlessly prove popular with the party. Very good. Anything else around here? Oh, there are ten! Gosh dang it, we need a perfect two. 33% chance, 33% chance. Manpower, command power, we're gonna lose this. We're, we're probably not gonna be able to get France. Uh, there's... There's... Such a small chance that we're actually successful there. And I'm, for now, I'm kind of, ooh, what am I doing? I'm a little bit done with doing this, because we, the conservatives still have majority power here. So, as long as they have majority power, that's the most important thing in my mind. A new leader, oh, turret range finders, don't mind if we do, yes. That's a little bit ahead of time, let's grab some more skirts. Ah, oh, I love skirts. 
Well, that's not weird. That's kind of weird to say. Not too weird, I suppose. Next assignment, a frozen hellhole. Dietrich entered the officer's canteen while still holding the paper in his hand. From the expression on some of his colleagues' faces and a few whispering words, they too had received the same message. The fear of personally congratulating each of them, each of them, for the new assignment to Muscovy and thanking them for their dedication to the Reich and their willingness to serve in such a difficult environment, a quality only the best officers of the Mach possesses. It wasn't stupid, of course. Coincidentally, most officers belonging to the unofficial military's faction that he had been reassigned, or even promoted. Dermot, Kirsten's and Alpos, and Muscovine. Even more coincidentally, their departure was scheduled immediately. He knew Bowman's true scheme, just as many of the others, removed the military's faction in Germania by sending all the members on permanent assignment to Russia. He was furious about it, of course, and many agreed with him, but what could he do about it? Nothing. Bowman had them. He had them all. The dude had put them in a gilded, or, yeah, gilded cage. One they had no hope to escape from without revealing their factionalism, and in the Reich there was no factions, at least from outside the Fuhrer approved of, and Martin Bowman didn't approve of them. One problem less. Cool. You get more ultra-nationalism? Good for you guys. Enjoy it. Embrace it. It is good for you. What a bunch of despots. A new leader and a new agenda. The people have gotten a bit unruly lately. The Wehrmacht, uh, politization and the dismantlement have only accentuated it. While well, the Wehrmacht is currently near touchable, near untouchable, while the Wehrmacht, uh, it, we can touch the people. The last thing we want is more student protests. The Oppo will be given a new list of targets and what things to watch for. We will prevent, uh, prevent degeneracy wherever we see it. Expanding the Oppo will lead to lower levels of degeneracy than ever before. So many accusers of as, of using this as an excuse to root up political opponents. It'll. It's not like the old fear didn't do the same. We'll be sure that to make sure that these people see that point of view or else. England defeats Wales. Well, that is... Does that always happen? Hmm. And, of course, we could do that, but I'm going to keep expanding. A new leader. Everything. My people. Everything for the people. Okay, so... Okay, so we lost. So, basically, we lost France. Oh, my apologies, but there's just really nothing we could do. There's really just literally nothing we could do about that. Well, we did really well with everything else, but unfortunately we do not get the French. It is big sadness. Big sadness. We claim the pact. Uh, we negotiate. Oh, we can't get Sweden because... Can I invade Sweden now? I mean, at this point, we should just be able to invade them. Everything is old new. Past events have been troubling. To solve a problem without complete knowledge is, is, of it is impossible, and this almost proved to be the Reich's downfall. Mueller nodded politely. I quite agree. Knowledge is power, as they say. Bowman leaned forward in an intense look in his eye. I thought you'd say that. I know you're not the most ardent believer in party doctrine, and this is acceptable. I need someone without scruples, someone who knows how to look out for themselves, someone pragmatic. The Reich's intelligence services are a mess with such a, such was Hitler's way. He trusted no man with all that information. Well, Hitler was wrong, it almost killed me. I want everything under one branch, and that is the Orpel, and I want to put you in charge. Mueller wasn't particularly surprised. It was his lack of politics that had grabbed Hedrich's eye back when to do such a thing wasn't a death sentence. That would certainly step up, however. It would be my honor, my Fuhrer. Don't talk to me of honor as if you believe in it. I don't want a man with honor. I want a man who will act in his own self-interest. You have found him. Wow. We get Mueller here, huh? Unlocks Hauptverwaltung Aufklärung Decisions. Oh, boy. Whoa. President Heinrich Müller. Budget? Oh, yeah. Training? This costs command power, apparently. This is like the whole, uh, well... I went maxed out on this. Research. This is literally just like the CIA modifier for the United States. And unlike that one, this one actually kind of works. Still not bad. How is our construction going, actually? What's going on? Irkutsk. Whole... Why are the commies uniting? What the heck? <laughs> um, I'm hoping Krasnoyarsk wins. That's a not a great flag, but whatever. That's actually more a Siberian flag, but whatever. And a new agenda, eh? The Estratisha Unta Stutsung Bolazai. The Oppo's ability to collect information has been hampered by many things. Lack of funds, political meddling, you name it. We must stop us all at, at all costs and redouble efforts toward combating degeneracy. To do this, a new bureau must be formed to work in conjunction with the Gestapo. The Estratisha Unta Stutsung Bolazai, the finest gatherers of information the Reich has ever seen. Their job is to watch and listen, always alert for degeneracy. Wherever they see it, they get the, st they get the Gestapo to act and the degeneracy disappears. And it just so happens that, that disloyalty towards a Fuhrer is considered degeneracy. Who would have thought of such a thing? All right, conservative, conservative, conservative. Uh, Reichswerke. No, 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 no. There you go. More conservative support there. Oh, we're doing really quite well. We got nine. They got ten. They got perfect. How? Well, since we're going to lose anyways, I'm going to try it, right? Anything else down here? Cabal efforts? Eh, sure, why not? Oh, we can... Special missions. Response. It's a response to CIA and Kempai Tai. A newly formed branch of the Orpo unifying the Reich's uh, foreign intelligence agencies. Yes. 
Yes. So we need money and money and stuff. I, w I was wondering when we would get stuff like this to work with. In terms of, like, you know, special intelligence stuff. Hey, we finally hit it again. Nice. I was just looking. We're still building a bunch of civilian factories. Not as much as before, but we're still working on it. And always there. Always here. Our enemies are not safe. Far from it. Around every corner. Behind every wall. Behind every newspaper. Behind every alleyway. Behind every stone. Left and turn. We are there. Behind you. Beside you. Above you. We're always waiting. And if you think for one second we're out of the reach of the Fero, you are wrong. We are always there. And we are always ready to strike. You'd best be careful how you act. We were right behind you. Watching you the entire way. Time for a reset, perhaps? France sides with Italy. Those bunch of degenerate Frenchmen. Burgundy should have finished them off. Lee shut off the radio after his speech was over. He was asked, so what do you think, sir? The ambassador thought for a long while as he collected his thoughts. It sounds like Prime Minister Maldung wants to play nice with us. That speech was almost all about turning over New Leaf, how there's potential with England, trading with Germany again, how he wants relations to be restored, all that stuff. Thought he'd be a bit more angry with us, Musiade. Ah, uh, why should he be? They have Cornwall. They don't have any reason to be angry with us anymore. And their officers is designed to keep the Wehrmacht off the heels. We can still go after them, don't you think? They aren't ready, after all, and what they did was tantamount to a war between us and them. The ambassador shook his head. I don't think that's going to happen. Germania wants a way out of this. It's the best that we can get at the moment. I'll uh, relay those thoughts to the Reichs Minister. Sometimes we just have to take a step back. That's so sad we lost them, but whatever. Threaten them into submission. Who's this over? Mm, I don't know. But not bad. It feels like there's a few just... A little bit, just a little bit compared to the last few episodes, a little bit less events, and that's kind of actually kind of okay with me. I kind of see what happens, because I have to plan, or we have to keep in mind, for the future, that we will have the great oil crash, and that's going to ruin our economy. Ah, good, good, good. More research, more research, very good. So good, so good. Always watching, my friends, while we can't literally be around you at all times. We can still monitor you and your every move. We are watching you constantly. No one knows where you are at all times. No matter your ranking, we can still see you. Through cameras and other observers, we are always there. You are never safe. We are even there when we aren't there. Even if you retreat to the most remote mountaintop of the remote mountain in the most remote country in the world, we can still find you. You better be on your best behavior. You don't want to end up in a camp after all. Now do you? A shadow. <clears throat> Peter walked briskly, trying to inconspicuously check if the man still followed him. They had gone off at the same bus stop, which had given Peter enough pause. He had never seen the man before, and he was well acquainted with enough with all of his neighbors. Then he began to follow Peter on his way, walk home. Peter had long since passed his own house, even doubling back to try and lose the unknown figure. Steadily, however, the man continued to tail him. <clears throat> Peter was unsure what he could do about this. He was only an accountant. He had no rivals that would have sent a man after him, and no mugger would be this dedicated to a single mock. His wife, Elise, had protected him against Hindenburg's coalition with the Nazis. But that was years ago, even before the war beat one. Surely they cannot be seeking revenge for that, after Elise had proven herself dedicated to Germany in the years since. Was this all because Peter had previously worked for Erhard Speil's man? In the back of his mind, however, Peter knew what had occurred, what they had found out. Years ago, and before the collapse, he and Elise had hidden a young Jewish girl in the basement. It had just been a few weeks while Elise's brother had been under investigation. They had promised Peter that it would never be tied back to him, and that he would be saving a young girl's life. Peter bit his lip, continuing to walk aimlessly. If he returned home, it was possible that he would be condemning his own children to death as well. A traitor exposed. How degenerate. Hiding young little Jewish girls? Well, depending on what you want to do with them, could be a problem. Just say. Just say. 77.9%. How is the... God, I want to play as this nation so badly. <clears throat> and he might be featured in 2021. If you're watching this 2021, thank you for watching. Anything else around here? We have one, two, three, four, five. No, not really. Not yet. Very good. Always watching, my friends. Ever ready. We are ready to strike at all times. Our threats have, have meaning to them. Have you ever seen someone disappear randomly? Have you ever seen someone go to work and never come back? That was us. We will destroy all enemies of the Fira, leaving only the most loyal alive. The Oppo is ready for anything and anyone, and not afraid to get its hands dirty so that the Fira may reign supreme. Gone are the days of political meddling with every single action and arrest done. There is a new Reich now, and a new round of arrests to be made. Ooh, more encryption and decryption, and we got more stability. Ah, yes, please. Constant listening. The Oppo hears you. We always hear you and have always heard you. They have bugs in every phone line and informants trained to hear every passing conversation conversation on the street. The Oppo have their ears constantly to the wall and even we hear you loud and clear. Even if you whisper as quietly as possible, we can still tell what you're saying. We will hear you no matter what. We will hear you no matter what, where you hide. Nothing is soundproof. You better shut up if you want to stay alive. 
the great Serbian game. Oh no, many around the world wouldn't know it, but technically Serbia is an independent country. In actuality, it is a little more than a German-led collaboration state, and it certainly ran like one. Although relatively peaceful after the Second World War, the small state would see a huge influx of refugees enter its borders. Italian difference to the plight of Serbians in Albania and other Italian-held regions in the Balkans meant that Serbia is one of the few places left that welcomes its own people. And even there, they face hardships. The country, not ready to face such massive numbers of migrants and immigrants, now has to deal with massive unemployment, poverty, and literal cities of tents for refugees who have now where else to go. To make matters worse, the situation is about to boil over. With more and more refugees entering the country day by day, the conditions in the many refugee camps are becoming unsustainable. The Italian government, ever generous, is offering a large amount of humanitarian aid to assist the Serbian people. Although this doesn't change the fact that the Italians are the largest contributor to the problem in the first place, something the government conveniently ignores. On the other hand, the the Germans are implementing their own way of work programs and sending economic assistance while both sides try to play the Serbians against each other in an underground political battle. It isn't exactly clear who has the advantage or who will the Serbian, Serbians hate more, but the results will be nothing short of entertaining, if nothing else. The Serbians are just more pawns in the great game. Four and five, well, we want to get up to six, so let's go with large numbers first. Send over heavy guns. Can I recruit some more, please? No? Yes? Okay. Nothing here yet. Nothing here. Nothing here. I guess we better save a little bit of our... Liquid reserves. Hey, minus 1.2 billion. Actually, why can't we do this? Enemy aircraft down. My fear. I have some news to report. Something very interesting just happened within our borders. Martin Bowman looked up to bring a chair forward. Then sat back down with his hands on his desk. What do you have for me? The fear asks. A stern look, adding to his shadowy voice. The officer took a seat and began to recall what he had seen earlier. A few hours ago, the local radar station in Vesvali detected a foreign object in the skies. We attempted to establish communication with it, but once these efforts failed, our SAM fired on the object. During the attack, we realized it was a foreign aircraft, and the plane crashed about 20 miles northwest from Dortmund. Do you know where the plane came from? Martin Bowman inquired, leaning back in his chair and interlocking his fingers. <clears throat> Here's why the situation is so good for us. The pilot survived the crash, and then we captured him. We found out that he came from the U.S. Apparently, the Americans were testing out some sort of new spy plane, and they used our country as a test site. Unfortunately, the photos that were taken have already been sent back to the U.S., and the pilot is refusing to give up any information. We can certainly torture the pilot for information, but we need to be careful while the Americans saw the photos, nevertheless. We have an American hostage. If we play our cards right, we can get what we want. Nothing. Now, how badly do they want him back? Oh, look at this. Civilian factories never enough. And we'll build up infrastructure to the max amount here, too, as well, once we continue running out of things to build in our country. And I will be building the GDP of these guys, too, to make sure that they are uh, okay with growth and that their economy is doing tremendous. Because if their economy is doing tremendous, then you know what? Maybe our economy will do tremendously as well. Loads of civilian factories so they can build, build, build. And I'll probably do more of that once we're off-screen, maybe a little bit more. Um, we'll see what happens, though. Oh, was that... Oh, factories. Oh, I want to do this one. So good, my friends. So good. Whatever. Good enough for now. How's the great game going? Oh, it's paused. No wonder it's not going. Well, we're at eight. Uh, we need two. If anything, fortifier outposts would be the best. Now we need liquid reserves, which we'll get very soon anyway, so... Ever ready? Constantly listening. A captain pilot, after a diplomatic exchange some information, Americans are now fully aware of the pilot being in our captivity. President LBJ is furious that we're refusing to let the man go already. He has made it clear that the U.S. wants its pilot back, but right now, we're in the middle of squeezing information out of him. No matter the outcomes of the new crisis, we need to make sure that the Americans do not try this action again. We have two options to take. Either we can give in to the President's demands now and send the pilot home, losing respect and prestige, or we can hold on to the pilot until they give us the photos they took while we get more information out of them. Send him back? No, 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 no. He's not going anywhere until we have the photos. No, 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 no. So we gotta wait for that. We still can't do anything here. And fund the Cabal. 67%. Ah, do the efforts, why not? Just because we have more than enough political power right now. And we'll torching. Oh, uh oh. There's no description here. That is. Unlocks access to the economy and diplo diplomacy focus trees. Okay. Torching evidence. Well, now we might be seeing the cracks of maybe later game. Borman, but anyways, America. Ah, oh, America sees the photos. We have reached an agreement with Americans regarding their lost pilot. American leadership has notified us, and we will be receiving the photos they took of our territory. In exchange, we will send this pilot back home to his country. We also expect an apology in the coming days. Even though we lost the pilot, this is by no means a diplomatic failure. The Americans simply caved into our demands, and both of us got what we wanted out of the discussions. Our propaganda machine has worked as its work cut out for us. It, we will certainly use this as an accident to paint the Americans in a more negative light. Even with this, our citizens are already celebrating their diplomatic victory back home. The world has just been saved yet again from the threat of nuclear war. For now, let's just hope the Americans don't discover the bruises we gave their pilot. These photos look stunning. Wow, we should develop something like that for ourselves. Oh man, I want more. I want more. 
Uh, do we have liquid reserves? We should have some liquid reserves by now, right? Maybe. Maybe. 82 million? Well, maybe we need more than that, actually. And how is the game pl being played? Well... Local server, local server form... Looking a little better. And if we don't do anything here, actually, I'm still going to boost it up. Because I want as much spending, or not spending, technically. Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? Oh, come on. Well, 33% chance, 33% chance. There you go. That's so dumb. I want Serbia. They already got France. Why can't we have Serbia? Constantly listening and torturing the evidence. Are we supposed to get an event after this one, too? Oh, maybe not. Eyes and ears everywhere. Top secret. Eyes only. To all members of the Strategische Unterstützung Polizei, Germany, other residences of suspected dissidents, a suspect has been frequently in contact with groups deemed to be linked to dangerous Spiat factions. Continue to monitor, uh, monitor closely. Suspect B, for all intents and purposes, behaved as normal, upstanding citizens of the Reich. However, it's possible that this is a front to continue to monitor closely. We must. Suspect C has had several suspicious conversations, which we believe to be part of a plot to assassinate a local member of the Reichstag. Eliminate at once. Suspect D has been observed, trying to establish a covert series of meetings with an unknown individual. However, we have determined that this is not a treasonous activity. Suspect D appears to have it, have any fear that he is a non-threat. May Germany be in safe hands. We will know who is loyal. Well, it is time for more research, of course. More and more research. And actually, if you look over here, well, we're doing quite well with this stuff now, actually. But we have actually won the first turn for Serbia. 10, and they have 13, but we have a dealmaker to deal breaker. Bowman examined the papers on his desk. He had made a lot of promises, promises that were something he tried to avoid, but for when you adhere to one, you'd usually break the other. Protecting the Reich and being kind to its people were usually polar opposites, for example. It had taken far too many promises to evade the coup, ones he'd rather really not keep. He picked up the papers and flicked through them. It was there no proof or promise, or proof of a promise had been made. It would be simply his word against theirs, and his word was the best in Reich. He stood from his comfortable chair and surveyed how his now empty office. It was lit only by smoldering embers. He cast the papers into the fireplace and watched them shrivel and burn. Problem, problem solved. So good. Oh, we just torched the evidence. It's now a modern Wunderwaffe. Just like the old days, Germany's economic strength lies in its motivation, grit, and determination of its civilian populace. Martin Bormann, fear of the Reich, has motivationed, motioned to look into the past and see what had made Germany so straight, great and strong before. It was about 30 years ago. The people of Germany had built will build infrastructure across the nation. The heart of the Reich is in its steel and concrete, after all, and make sure that every part of Germany is connected to each other. We will invest into the heart of Europe, and when we will receive our due profits, we shall invest further until the economy soars above the rest of the world. With Bormann's vision, the future of Germany shall be all the brighter. No longer shall the slave be the working man's image of the Reich. Instead, it will be the German man working in the factories and in the field. And it is a Führer's will that the slavery will no longer serve as Germany's modus operandi. Beautiful, mein Freundin. Freunde? Freundin? Hmm. Good. 57%. Why is it going down even more, even though we're doing bolster anti hutig stuff? Doesn't make sense to me. Does not compute. After that, reaping the reward, increasing economic growth by 0.2. Well, we gotta go this way first. Ooh! Removing the weeds, slavery has been a hindrance for the economy of the Reich for too long. A phase out seems like the best solution. However, while they are still messing around, the slaves might as well be making themselves useful. While waiting for their transfer to the areas of origin, at least in theory, they shall inhabit specialized work camps alongside the regular economy where they can pass their days constructing railroads. Oh, I'll be working on the railroad all the doodong day. Wow, they're at nine. Oh, that is pretty close. Hopefully, we can find something for five. Oh, R and D's in research. Something for five, please. Oh no, why? Why do you hurt us so? Uh, let's see. Any more things? So we did this one. Uh, to do this stuff, what do we need? Antica recon satellites. Satellites, huh? Ooh. Yes. Very good. So good. So yeah, so good. 56%. It's still going down by quite a bit. Oh my goodness, that's not good. Nothing here yet. Minus 3.6 billion, not bad. And removing the weeds. The modern Wunderwaffe. Martin Bormann ever, ever was quite early, of course. He strummed the table impatiently as Reich's minister Lang and his, his men filled into the room and took their places at the table. Hurry up, gentlemen. We have so much to discuss. He spread his arms open. Reich's minister Lang and I have drawn up a new initiative destined to secure the Reich as an absolute hegemon of Europe. We have called it the Mond of Wunderwaffe. The economists looked at each other with impressed faces and nodded eagerly. We shall initiate a various governmental infrastructure and pipeline projects with Germania. This city shall become the next nexus of the continent in the next decade. Reich's minister Lang, if you please. Yes, mein Führer, Kurt Lang nodded. He is a colorless bald man in 
a gray dull suit a modern functionary of the state. As we all know, the Alva reliance on slavery has crippled our economy and decimated the working class. Slaves will be barely be involved in the modern Wunderwaffe initiative, mock my words. It is a German worker who shall toil and sweat over these projects, and their newly earned wages will encourage more spending. Many German firms are financially collapsing, cutting jobs, but the economic boost provided by this new wave of spending should ensure a rise in employment. All we need to do is push, and the snowball shall grow into an avalanche. Bowman finished with a smug satisfaction, but to what shall be done with the slaves? I know how to deal with slaves. But I'll save that for another time. The perfidious spare. Bowman sat at his desk and had cleared a large amount of paperwork off of it, and the day's work was almost done. He leaned back in his office chair, his momentary peace and quiet was interrupted by Gerhard Klopf rushing into his office. Mein Führer, I was told to give you this. Klopf replaced a large file onto Bowman's desk. He quickly ran off. Bowman entered, opened the file. Soon a howl of anger echoed throughout the building. Spare. Bowman raced out of his office into Heinrich Müller's Müller. Can you believe this? Spare is still alive and he's trying to put it publish us. The slander. Bowman dropped a copy of Albert Speer's manuscript inside the Third Reich on Müller's desk. Yes, I can believe it. Our spies managed to get a copy of his manuscript. I thought you needed to see it. Müller said, This is barely anything historical in it. It blames me for everything Speer did, and some of it just isn't true. I mean, come on. How am I a sexual predator? I'm not jo Joseph Goebbels. Hopefully, it'll be so ridiculous that no one will bother to put... They better not. Oh, boy. Sexual exploits. Oh, boy. Better not let his children read about that. Oh, oh look at this. Oh, gross around continental Europe, inside the Third Reich. Bowman fumed as he stared at the book in his hands. Number one New York Ta New York Times bestseller. That dude Speer's book was internationally acclaimed. Bowman flipped through his pages in the hope that the slander would be cut or censored. None of it was. The entire world now thought Bowman was a heartless monster. They've been brainwashed by Speer's Judeo-Bolshevik propaganda. Bowman clenched his fist as he read through the pages of Speer's book. He was seething even more than when he finally finished. Bowman screamed a bad word. He placed his or slammed his fingers and fists against the desk. Gosh darn you, Speer. Bowman looked at the cover of the book. Speer's smiling face on the cover seemed to mock him even on, from exile. Bowman got up from his desk and barged into Havel's office. I want you to tell those mongrel Americans to give me Speer right now. Bowman spat before walking out. And make sure that those degenerate book never so much as touches German shores. That dude. So, we solved this. We're at five compared to nine. Um... I should say there's nothing for four, 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 three. Let's go with this one. Ration cards, cool. So, Gross Raum of Continental Europe. To make Germany and the Pact strong again, Bowman has initiated the Gross Raum Continental Europe uh, Economic Project, a shared market with the goal of, is to make the Reich in Europe utterly self sufficient. The Gross Raum is also the financial leash with which the Fuhrer ensures German dom domination. In more practical terms, uh, the program is essentially aimed to rebound the economies of the ex commissars back to the hotland and reduce the eventual abolishment of slave system. You know what I like? That we have these guys with a slave population 5. Point, we have six, almost 6 million. GDP growth is actually quite good. GDP growth for us sucks. Why are the ex commissariats doing so much better than us? Look at the growth! It's 3% almost throughout! Or one and a half. Let's see. Good investments. Jeez. Whoa. Oh, girl. Oh, wait. This is we can increase the growth. Oh. Decrease our economic investment in the Ausgrenzungs program by minus 0.5%. Increase our. Oh, wait. Oh, whoops. Oh, that costs political power. Whoopsie. <laughs> My bad. Uh, yeah, that's not, that's my bad. Just show us all investments. I should have realized that more. Um, hmm. My bad. I should have realized that. A demand from the Reich. After a long day of negotiations, Bowman was finally able to secure a line to the president himself. He sat at his desk, unamused. Finally, someone picked up the other hand. Is this President LBJ of the United States of America? Bowman asked. This is his translator, but everything said comes directly from the president. You want to extradite Speer, right? Yes, hand over Speer and stop all publications of his book. Well, why do you want us to ban the book? It is slandered against the Reich. It is full of lies about my nation. Well, if it's all false, why do you care? <laughs> it makes us look worse because you Americans believe every word of it. Aren't we enemies? Why do you care what your enemies think? Because I don't have an answer for that. Turn over Speer to us and face the diplomatic wrath of the Reich. The president's comment had struck a nerve. Bormann heard a swiftly stifled chuckle coming from the other end of the line. You think this is funny? I swear, if you do not return Speer and stop the publication of the nonsense, I will turn the Reich's full power against you. You will rue the day that, Mr. Bormann, we're not giving Speer over. Goodbye. And with that, the president hung up. Bormann's face burned red. The mongrel dudes. I should have realized this. I'm going to invest more. I'm going to invest as much as we can into that stuff. Uh, ooh, that hurts our annual deficit, though. No matter. The economies shall be united once more. The Iberian divorce, it wasn't meant to be. Oh, Spain. <sighs> they can't hold themselves like the Reich can hold itself. Even after a civil war, we can still hold ourselves quite well. 
with a new friends. One mustn't fear the influences of the mega corporations, for the loyalty of the Fiora Bormans, Gross Germanisches Reich is unquestionable. A useful ally of the government, these entities have been the, had the resources and the capital required to construct greater infrastructure and ferment the removal of the slave population for the Metropolitan Reich, of course. Whilst many corporations desire the continuation of the Reich status quo, the Fiora has made it clear that the alternatives to progress is their destruction, and this should surely inspire cooperation. A request denied. Bowman grunt down the remaining schnapps in his glass and exhaled, exhaled with a grunt. It was not the president's refusal that angered him so. In fact, he had expected a puppet of international Jewry to sympathize with Speer and his so pro capitalist fightings. What sent his heart thumping and his head pounding was a complete and other lack of respect. Bowman scoffed to himself. Mein Führer, Walter Hebel inquired, pouring himself another glass. The foreign minister was already slurring his words. He'd always been a pathetic lightweight. It is a tragedy of America that their average white citizen holds a Negro on the other, on a higher peasant pedestal than the Aryan. Bowman took the bottle Havel from Havel and began to pour. We must take matters into our own hands. Now that our tenacious Orpo chief has uncovered the traitor's whereabouts, it is time to strike. I must protest, my fear. Heinrich Miller smiled modestly. It is the tenacity of the Ordnungspolizei itself that must be celebrated, celebrated, not just my efforts. Yes, we have located Speer agents in America waiting your orders. It would be wise to act in secrecy, Bowman began tapping his outstretched fingers together. Havel nodded in agreement. Place the bag over his head, shoot him, throw him in a ditch. We deny any responsibility or we show the Americans the same disrespect they showed us. We send a message to the whole world if you betray the Reich, there is nowhere to turn. Assassinate him in complete secrecy and deny our complicity? Uh, murder him brutally and publicly? Uh, no, if we do that, then they might assassinate us, which would not be very good, so. That would be good. Alright, still got this going. Uh, cover up efforts, now we good. Now we need more political power. The end of Milorg. It looks like the continuous failure of the Milorg in securing or even expanding their influence throughout Norway has finally broken their back. Reports of defections, bottom rock morale, and escapes to Sweden, Finland, or all offended have increased significantly. A top secret source has even provided the Orpo with the document transcripting the final meaning of the Milorg remains and the subsequent disbanding. While we aren't quite that optimistic yet, yet the truth is probably not that far from it. Anyway, with the decadent agents of the OFN close to total defeat, our position in Norway should be soon should solidify. Um hmm. 33% chance. Well, if we don't do anything, we're going to lose anyway, so. So be it. So love you. We invest more. This goes up more and more, which I don't like. Uh, I just want to have a good economy for us. Honestly, we probably don't. Uh, so here's what we're going to do with this. We're going to be removing the weeds, of course. And with our new friends. Uh, we don't really have to focus on this since we do have absolute power. Or, not absolute power, but we have majority power, so we don't really focus on that. Regarding this, minimum investment, I'm going to keep increasing this until it's green. Or not green, but, you know, not red. Minimum investment is good. So that said, oh, that growth is pretty good too. Oh, what is this? The Krakow Railway Junction. Oh, look at this. The value of our reserves is insufficient cost. We will add the cost of the national debt. Um. Oh, Agricultural Society. You know what? This says like it's going to be spending a lot of money. So if you'd like to read about this, I'm not even reading this. I'm just clicking on buttons. Who cares? Infrastructure modernization? Nice. So I'm done investing any more to... Oh, God, we lost it. Dang it. Oh, there's nothing we could do about that. Whatever. So, 1.55 billion is not good. Wow, minus 0.5, that's getting better. Reduced rubble. Breaker had a feeling it would happen. It's awoken to him. It had awoken him in the night, sealing chills down to his spine. In his pajamas, he rushed over to his gallery. His suspicions were confirmed that Ray two weeks ago hadn't been the last. Rubble coated the walls and floor. The entire gallery was a mess. Breaker couldn't tell which dust used to belong to which sculptor. Distraught, the sculptor began to aimlessly wander around the gallery, hoping for some modicum of relief. Instead, he only saw more destruction. Most of the sculptures were intact, thank God, but many of them were completely destroyed. Gearbull's bust was gone, leaving only an empty pedestal. Breaker had expected this other fear. The bust of the Reich, Reich, late Reich Marshal was also destroyed again in another expected move, but why... Zink, Zin came for, and De Sigurin. They were merely representations of the strength of the Reich, and there wasn't even a slight indication that they were in support of Speer Goring. Breaker puzzled over the ruins what felt like hours, attempting to work out the fear's reasoning. He couldn't. Breaker shook his, broke, shook his head and left the gallery. He could always make a new art for the Bowman later. Maybe things will settle down? Well, let's hope so. That'd be good for us. And good for all, really. So we're kind of done with this. Economic failure? Or above required? Good. We're not going to have economic failure. Current investment, 2.5% of GDP. It's not much, it's really not much, but expand extraction operations? Um Eastern Industrial Buildup? Sure, why not? I mean that's totally fine with me. I mean debt, I mean it's already 
It's honestly not that much higher than what we've already started with, so I'm not too worried about that. Whatever, you know. Eventually, once everything's built, we'll continue to crack down everything else. Obviously, we have no liquid reserves. We could do this, but I kind of want to save political power. We still only get 2.6 every day, which is not bad. Not bad, actually. With our new friends. Extract, uh, naval industry, western slave repatriation. Oh, yes. Effects on the chosen Rex Commissariat. Slaves will... Our poverty rate will begin to improve. Okay. Integration of selected Rex Commissariat into the gross realm and the Rex economy will improve. I like that idea. Quite a bit. The corporate solution. Listen up, Bowman shouted. The chattering economists gathered around the table. They snapped into a silent attention. Here are the final modern Wunderwaffe proposals formulated by the Ex Minister Lang and myself. While well, this initiative to succeed, we must deal with the slave question. To make way for the working class, so slaves will be deported to small ethnic territories and newly established ghettos throughout Eastern Europe. Whether these destinations are in their nation of origin is no interest to the bureaucratic process. They are all essentially Untermention. I have a couple questions, as my Fuhrer, as one of the bespeckled functionaries that spoke up, awkwardly raising his hand. Bowman nodded to him to continue. How long can we expect this process to take, and how long are the big four going to fit into this? It will not be instantaneous, Bowman explained. The deportation will be a sensible, gradual pace. The most able slaves will be deported at last, of course, so that the, during the waiting process they can be supplemented or can supplement the infrastructure projects with their labor. As for the big four, if I may, Long continued, shuffling his notes, presumably you are referring to the mega corporations. Well, we will be attempting to enlist the help of all four, but naturally won't become our primary partner. Siemens is the smallest, most loyal cooperation or corporation, and so will require the least down payment of cooperation. Daimler Benz is relatively loyal as well, although Reichswerk is less so, and IG5 allegiance is by far the most dubious, although it must be said they are the largest and most powerful and they are most, they're the most useful. Enough, Reich's Minister of Bowman interjected. I've already made my decision. Loyal, a payment of 50 million, increase of political power gained by 0.2 and a construction speed by 2%. 100 million. Ooh. They're the largest and most useful. Um, decrease our political power gained by 0.5, increase our construction speed by 10% and growth by 0.1%. Ooh, I want more growth. I really want more growth. But, Siemens, I, we're gonna go with loyalty. Loyalty in, is p paramount. And out with the old. The Unity Pact with the gross GGR's sphere of influence is arguably the institution that helped create the slave system, which should help prove useful in its destruction. The machinations of the Unity Pact that efficiently shipped millions of slaves to Germania should now be used to return them to their respective homelands. Moreover, the administration's place in charge of the eastern territories by Fjord Bowman will hold experience uh, required to successfully put these individuals to work on the Reich's building projects. So good. A deal with Siemens, please enter Bowman called out. He chose in the spacious but private downstairs meeting room. He did not want them to discuss business in his office. The stuffiness would have them sweating like pigs, and he was unsure the psychology of the grandiose sculptures, paintings, and symbols would have much effect on such a powerful man. Ernst von Siemens entered the room with a smile. The great eminence, Bowman thought to himself smugly, the man's demeanor was lifeless and gray, his hair was thinning and gray, his suit ill-fitting and gray, yet embedded in this figure of mediocrity were two sharp eyes. Bringing with intelligence, Bowman offered a seat to the man and two sunk down together in the large, comfortable armchairs. We've discussed much over the phone, Bowman began. I understand we are mostly in agreements. Your corporation your corporation will aid, aid the state will aid the state in these deportations and the establishment of ghettos and camps throughout Europe. You have my you've proven yourself to be a true national socialist, and so you have my un Dying trust. I'm here to fulfill our agreement, Von Siemens occurred, and to negotiate. The Siemens Corporation is not rich enough to engage in the scale you were hinting at during our phone call, but we shall try our best. He leans forward, smiling gently. I will make one thing absolutely certain. I will not budge on this at all. Siemens is the only German mega corporation tolerated in the international community because we haven't engaged in the same level of slavery as our competitors. These territories, ghettos, and camps, whatever you call them, I want them officially covered up by the state. Agree to this, and the deal is done. Then the deal is done, my friends. We have a secured a deal. God dang it, 11. Ugh. But let a day pass, and we shall have a new attempt to do well, my friends. Uh, zero. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Well, I guess we gotta go sell arms licenses, because that's the only way we can do. All right, expand extraction operations. Yes, please. Anything else? Anything else? No. Uh, let's go and do this one, because we can. 29- Why is it 29%? Oh, it's a, it's like a giant, you know, political money sink. <sighs> 1 1.3, alright. Alex Banner, Nung's bullet time. Militar share obshares in obshim deems to the fear of top secret inflammation. Attempted investigation and an infiltration of terrorist organization known as Reichsbanner is underway. Our agents have undercovered evidence that Reichsbanner is a network of dissidents and dedicated to dismantling our regime, restoring democracy and liberating the Untermensch. The leadership of Reichsbanner is currently unknown. Threat level low. Heil Bowman, Chief Heinrich Müller. Just a band of degenerate misfits, you say? Huh. All right. C'est la vie. So be it. We're still building ourselves up, which is good. And eventually we'll continue to build ourselves mole and mole and mole and mole. And you know what, when we're done, we'll build ourselves up 
a little bit more and more. So after this, I do want to do something else. Letting the groundwork seems kind of like fun. Ba building domestic infrastructure, lifting the curtain. Uh, bond forged in atomic fire. Italian thorn against a shadow state. Heinrich and a shadow state. Well, I want to do... Let's try lifting the curtain. When a good German citizen thinks of American people, they think of a degenerate liberal population, and say by much of their own delusions of greatness as they are by the love of Jews and Bolsheviks. However, despite their innumerable shortcomings in almost every aspect, we share two things with the Americans. A desire not to be, or not to let, nuclear war ravage the planet, and hatred for the ra racially inferior empire of Japan. Because it is uh, it is because of these common causes that our wise fear has excited to lessen the divide between the Reich and America. Foolish men may see this as a sign of weakness, but we know that it is instead as proof of national socialism and inherent superiority. The Americans, seeing the strength that we hold, will take their place below us of their own volition. They only need a few pushes in order to do so. Sehr gut. Sehr, sehr gut. Rome, of the North, there was a reason why. Saying for it, like rivers. The great streams of Europe's infrastructure control the ebb and flow of people and resources into the estuary of Rome. Caesar had seized an empire with symbols of blood, but Rome kept an empire with roads. When all roads lead to Rome, victory can only travel one direction. However, even the mightiest of empires fall, and Rome fell to none other than the Germans themselves. Decadence and degeneracy had gripped the nation, which, much like it gripped Europe before the Germans wrestled rightful control back over the continent. One man can't rule an empire, though if any man could, Bauman knew it was him. Regrettably, he had to share the reins with the petty furors of the Rex Commissariats. At these individuals that he needed to build the roads to his new Rome. Goethe had called Rome the capital of the world, and that, but that title belonged to Germany now, and it was now time that the economic flows of the continent reflected it. Bowman entered the Vauxhall main meeting room to find the bickering duties, dukes of the Rex colonies suddenly standing to attention. Hi, Bowman, the fellow nodded approvingly and sat down, the Rex Commissars followed. The plan lay was laid out. Infrastructure projects across the Reich's commissariat would be built to ensure that direction of power went to the Reich. Germany must remain the undisputed hegemon of Europe. Let's have fought back into the liberal decadence Hitler rescued it from. Railways, oil pipelines, electricity grids. Think of it like integration, Bowman said. The Reich and her allies combined to become more powerful collectively than they could ever imagine separately. Bowman added a final touch. Of course, for their own defensive purposes, the Reich's commissariat would be wise to collaborate with the most powerful military in Europe. The fear stated, Germany's enemies fear her for a reason. For a second each, Bowman made each kind eye contact with each of the Reich's dukes making sure they understood what he meant. Satisfied with his work, the fear rose and exited the room. Everyone, sooner or later, comes around by Rome. Naval industry investments? Of course. So good. Uh, four. We gotta hammer out a deal next, I guess. It looks like we're not gonna be able to win this one, too. Are you kidding me, guys? Ugh. Well, you guys haven't done anything bad to me. I mean, you're watching, so I appreciate you guys still watching, if you're still watching, so thank you. I would have really liked to get Finland. It's big sadness. Stupid Swedes. Getting in her way. 20.5%, huh? This is going down faster and faster. I'm going to assume the CIA is doing something about this. So. Big, big sadness. Lifting the curtain. And then we shall be putting them to work. The decision has been made and the time has come with our mega corporation partner chosen. The ghost of Russia's wreck has found itself now capable of commencing with the removal of the slave population from the fatherland. Indeed. Under the wise leadership of Fjord Bowman, the government shall cleanse the wreck of all untermensch based economic activity and development. Uh, do we... Actually, at this point, I think I'm done boosting civilian spending. I'm not going to cut it because that could actually really hurt our... Uh, construction. Political power goes down, resource efficiency goes down, consumer goods factories goes up by more. We lose 20% construction speed, so I think I'm done. Let's keep having our annual deficit. We have minus 0.4 for our GDP. It's not bad. It's not great. For the love of God, I wish we could do this as well. I wish we had more army XP. I wish we had some more liquid reserves, which we actually might have. Ooh, we could actually do really well if we have that one. And even more liquid reserves as well, so. Anything else? Other transatlantic fell, my friends. Fun the cabal? Yes, please. Putting them to work. The sun finally broke through the clouds, bathing the garden in a warm glow. Borman loosened his tie and slapped his thigh. The bu bulldog turned around with a growl and a sick lodge in his jaw and ran off into the bushes. Bring it back, Adolf, bring it back, Borman chortled loudly. He's still learning Baldor. It's a tough dude, it's like his namesake, doesn't know when to let go. Borman bent to his knee and clapped his hands together. Adolf emerged from the undergrowth and tried it over, panting heavily. As much as it pains me to say this, the time has come to thaw relations with the U.S. after all. I've been planning a diplomatic trip before the fear passed away. And, if I recall correctly, I'd plan to join you. Baldur von Schirach replied. He threw a stick far into the air, and the beagle, but the beagle sitting by his feet refused to budge. Go on, Carl. Get it. Ah, never mind. He crossed his arms. My fear, I would like to help organize the upcoming detente. My English is better than Baltazan. 
And you have my natural affinity for your mother's country. Bowman interjected with a smile, laughing as young Adolf jumped up to lick him, though no warmth emanated from his voice. Request denied. Valter will organize an upcoming conference. You have internal political matters to deal with. You may you know how self-obsessed the Americans are. If you get involved, they will make you face the day to day. Make you the face of it. Carl suddenly snapped his head around and barked viciously at Adolf. The young bulldog yelped and cowered behind Bowman's feet. Bowman cursed and swung a kick at the beagle, which cried out in pain and ran off. Keep your dog in check, Bowman snapped fiercely. Von Chirac's face turned a dark red, but he nodded in silence onwards with a detente. And one of the comments from yesterday said, Use the music mod. Well, the reason I do that, I don't use a music mod, is because it could get me copyright striked, and I don't want to get copyright striked for any of the videos I do. I try to avoid that. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please consider, really do please consider, leaving a like. Uh, subscribe if you're new, of course. Uh, you know what? Check out my Discord link. I usually say that, but don't worry about that. Hope you enjoyed today's episode, and I will see you all tomorrow, and have a great rest of your day.